and good afternoon. Here is the news afternoon first. The highlights. Legacy Cabin's Standard Organisation of Nigeria partner on standardisation for tourism related services. Nigeria, United Kingdom sign new agreement on investment partnership as trade relations hit £7 billion. Pounds. And Farrington Israeli military orders 100,000 people to leave parts of Rafah. And in sports, Minister Lords Team Nigeria athletes of a Paris Games mixed relay qualification. And now the details, I am Mike James. The Lagos State Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture has partnered with Standards Organization of Nigeria, SON, and the Federal Federation of Tourism Associations of Nigeria, FTAN, to enforce both international and national standards in Nigeria's tourism sector. Commissioner for Tourism, Arts and Culture, Toket Benson Awika, stated this at the Standardization Conference for Tourism and Related Services. Benson Awega said this can only be achieved through collaborative efforts. Hence, the need for all stakeholders, government agencies, industry players, academia and international bodies to work hand in hand towards implementing international best practices and setting new benchmarks of success. The Commissioner, who was represented by the Permanent Secretary for Tourism, Atten Culture, reaffirmed the unwavering commitment of the Lagos State Government to supporting initiatives that promote standardization and excellence in tourism and hospitality-related services. On his part, the Director General, SON, Ifai Okiki, said it is important to redefine the direction to ensure that tourism and hospitality business in Nigeria are made acceptable to all markets, both locally and internationally. And also speaking, the President of Federation of Tourism Associations of Nigeria, Nkwerem Onung, said, Given the importance of tourism, SON needs to appeal to all state government on the need to register all hotels in their state, as it will benefit both the state and the business owners. He noted that until there is a collaborative effort, the standard being targeted will not be attainable. Legacy government is set to remove over 100 shanties housing several people at Adeni Jadili on the bridge from today. Commissioner for the Environment and Water Resources, Tukumbo Wahab, said this during an interview with newsmen, noting that the removal is coming after the expiration of a 48 hours removal notice, served an all occupant of the shanties to move with their belongings. Wahab emphasized that the exercise is part of the commitment of the present administration to reclaim all ungoverned spaces that dot the state's landscape. He said apart from the unsanitary conditions of residents in the shanties, it also serves as hiding places for criminals and points for peddling hard drugs and substances which is injurious to the well-being of law-abiding residents. The Legacy Government has continued its wide exercise to free the state from visible security risks after the arrest of some suspects under the Dolphin Estate Bridge. Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Benga Motosho, who said the caseless influx of miscreants, beggars and the destitute on Lagos streets has raised fears of insecurity of lives and property, noted that it is unacceptable. Amatosha said the exercise will continue as part of government's responsibility to keep the citizens safe and secure. And as part of the exercise, 450 miscreants were rescued. At the weekend, 371 pleaded for assistance to relocate to their various states due to the hardship they are facing in Lagos. And 79 have been absorbed into some government facilities for rehabilitation after showing signs of being unwell. And now to the rest of the stories. Nigeria and the United Kingdom, UK, have signed a new agreement on enhanced trade and investment partnership as trade relations reached £7 billion. British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Richard Mungumeri, who announced this, said the agreement aims to boost cooperation in key sectors such as agriculture, creative industries, legal services, financial services and education. The British envoy said the new agreement is expected to increase trade volumes and strengthen economic ties between the two nations. According to Mungamari, Nigeria 
can benefit and take advantage of a new post-Brexit trading agreement called the Developing Countries Trading Scheme, DCTS. Montgomery noted that DCTS is one of the world's most generous schemes, removing tariffs on thousands of products worldwide to facilitate free trade. It will interest you to know that the UK currently exports around £4 billion worth of goods and services to Nigeria, while Nigeria's exports to the UK stands at approximately £3 billion. Well-meaning Nigerians who are alumni of public schools have been urged to support the government at all levels in the development of the education sector, especially in the area of infrastructure. This was the submission of stakeholders at the annual general meeting and constitution of new excos for the 1986 sets service club of the Eco Boys High School Association, Ikuba Mushi. Outgoing president of the club, Adishola Babatunde, explained that the government alone cannot develop education, hence more hands including the private sector, corporate bodies and associations such. Ikuba must be on deck to ensure future generations get the needed learning facilities. Babatun urged the new excos to amplify the efforts of the past administration in ensuring that the association's impact is felt by the alma mater, the Mushi community, Lagos and the country in general, while also improving the welfare of members both home and abroad. People who are shaking and moving Nigeria today finish from one school. So it's a question of those alumni and alumni of these schools to come back, to come together and then go look back and help the government in building their school. On his part, the new president of the club, GD Ujolakbe, while pledging to build on the legacies of the past administration, said he will lean on the knowledge and support of every member to move the association to greater heights. According to him, with the association's 40th anniversary in view, the school should brace up for impacting projects which will further improve learning and better the lives of students. Everything about coming together as former schoolmates is to give back, number one. First, to the community, which is the school that we finish from, and along the line, you know, to help one another, to encourage ourselves together as a member of the service club. So that is my vision principally. And I want to apply that in this past school. And the vision then was pulling us together. That will also continue in line. Earlier, Pan, our president of the association, Ulushe Goladipo, urged the new excos to be innovative in their ideas and carry members along in their policies. And over to foreign news, the Israeli military says it is encouraging people in the southern Gaza city of Rafa to move towards an expanded humanitarian zone. It comes ahead of an expected offensive on the city where more than 1.4 million people are sheltering. The Israeli Defense Forces IDF says it is a limited scope operation and not a wide-scale evacuation of eastern Rafah which will affect 100,000 people. It also says that evacuees will be directed to tent cities in nearby Khan Yunis and Al Mawasi, where aid will be available. Israeli strikes in Rafah reportedly killed at least 12 people overnight, while three Israeli soldiers were killed in a Hamas rocket attack near the Kerem Shalom crossing. And now to sports news, Minister of Sports Development's John Anna has congratulated Team Nigeria athletes for their impressive performances so far at the World Relays Championship in the Bahamas. The Nigerian athletes secured qualification for the 4x400 mixed relays and 4x400 men's relay event of the 2024 Olympics Games in Paris. Anna was immensely proud of their exceptional performance at a championship which secured two qualification tickets for the Olympic Games. And now's our news at 12, but just before we go, please do not drive beyond specified speed limits. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms, X Traffic Radio 961, Instagram Lagos Traffic Radio 961, Subscribe and watch our news and programs live on YouTube, Traffic Radio 961, and you can also visit our website, trafficradio961.ng. 
Did you know that the Sawulu administration trained 78 persons and placed 12 under the Talents Development Program, TDP, a student loan program aimed at training young persons in tech skills and placing them in employment? Well, you can get more details on the Lagos State Government's website. And to end the news, here are the highlights of the major stories. State Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture has partnered with Standards Organization of Nigeria, SON, and the Federation of Tourism Association of Nigeria, FTAN, to enforce both international and national standards in Nigeria's tourism sector. Nigeria and the United Kingdom have signed a new agreement on enhanced trade and investment partnership as trade relations reached £7 billion. We also told you that Israeli military said it would encourage people in the north southern Gaza city of Rafah to move towards an expanded humanitarian zone. And in sports, Minister of Sports Development John Enner has congratulated Team Nigeria athletes for their impressive performances so far at the World Relays Championship in the Bahamas. And for contact with the newsroom, send a message to info at traffic radio 961.ng. That ends the news broadcast compiled by Adirayodu Olaya. Thank you very much for listening. Lagos, my name is Mike James. Beautiful afternoon.